Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen. I wanna do a real quick video on how to fish stained or dingy water. All right, first of all, this is about the 10th or 11th time I've attempted to do this video. Um, and always, this whole week I've had nothing but technical issues with my microphone setup. Ended up being this little bitty wire that I've got sticking out on my GoPro. Uh, luckily I had a replacement, had to dig for it, it was in storage. But anyway, found it and uh, now I'm able to do some videos. <laughs> Sorry about the, the long wait after my last one. But uh, this is a this is kind of an important video. This was asked to me by uh, by a couple of young Instagrammers. I'll uh, I'll put their uh, little Instagram thing down at the bottom somewhere. So uh, give them some credit credit for this question. But uh, how to fish dingy water? First of all, what's dingy water? To me, dingy water is uh, visibility between uh, one foot and two feet of water. So not super muddy, but not clear either. Now the way I see it, that's the point where a a bass um is forced to use his lateral line of to feel vibration and sound uh, more than his his eyes more than his eyesight so that's the point in time where i'm going to go ahead and try to pick lures and pick uh, uh presentations that will appeal to that sense that sense of feel that he has so i'm going to pick baits that have rattles and and vibration and have a lot of action in the water to uh to attract those bass and i'm going to pick colors that they can pick up a little bit further away than just you know and then just the end of line of sight so it's like dark colors and bright colors are usually what i go with if it's a moving bait i'm going to use bright colors white chartreuse you know bright chartreuse is is a great color in that in that kind of water um now let's sit down i'm gonna show you some of the baits and then uh again to get up and show you how to fish a couple of them all right, so let's talk about the the baits that I would use in dingy water. Something like a uh, you know for moving baits, it'd be like a a lipless crankbait or a square bill. Bright colors. This one actually shows up pretty good in certain uh, dingy waters. It's one of my favorite early spring color colors. Uh, spinner baits. Spinner baits are huge. You know, a willow leaf would work. Uh, okay, it gives off enough vibration, but if you get into that that more of a dingy water, the, the less and less visibility there is, you're going to want a big Colorado blade, one of those round ones, and I don't have one on the boat. But chartreuse, chartreuse and gold uh, combination, anything with chartreuse in it and white uh, will show up really good. Bump those things up against everything that you can. If you're fishing a grassy lake or a lake that doesn't have a whole lot of, of brush and wood in it, uh, a chatterbait is excellent. Fish it close to the bottom, bump it into things, rip it out of the grass, things like that. Those are my base baits. That's what I'm going to th uh, throw as in a moving bait in dingy water. But if you get into the soft plastics, you can't beat something that's got some type of a paddle tail, some type of a kick tail. This is a Zoom Ultra Vibe Speed Worm, whatever they call it. Anyway, it's got a lot of vibration in the water, dark colors and uh, a jig, a black and blue jig with a, a, something like a, um, a vile cross, a trailer, something that's got a whole lot of kick to it. It's really, really good, and some rattles. I always keep some type of a, a jig rattle with me. So those are the baits. Let's get out in the water and start fishing and see if we can't catch a few. All right, so I wanna start off with a square bill. I'm covering water. I'm trying to figure out, trying to find a concentration of fish. And, uh, and so I'm just, work in the bank this uh, i love to throw a square bill when i'm doing this i know what depth it's gonna it's gonna fish at you know this uh this 2.0 fish is down to five feet deep so i know about where i'm gonna be concentrating i put the boat in uh, a depth where i can fish that five foot uh, parallel to that five foot and i just parallel the bank and uh slow and speed up and pop my rod and i'll try try all kinds of stuff but that thing makes enough vibration to get the attention of a fish. And uh, I like to parallel, excuse me, my nose itches. I like to parallel the bank um, because if a bass is sitting out here and I go between him and the bank, he's gonna try to pin that bait fish or pin my lure up against the bank to get it, to get a, uh, to catch it. So that's kind of how they like to position themselves. So I work myself parallel to the bank and just try to bounce it off of everything that I, I come in contact with. And when I bounce it, I stop. And I, I just pause it for a split second. 
Get a little bit of grass off of it. I just slowly work the bank. I don't fish as fast as all them pros do. I like to slow it down a little bit, get a couple of casts to the same spot. All right, so you always gotta be thinking about vibration, thinking about making a sound. That's what I'm gonna go with a heavier weighted Texas rig or a heavier jig. So when it, I cast it in, it splashes in the water and it makes a big bang on the bottom. And when it hits the bottom, I just kinda let it sit there for a minute. If a fish was close by and it heard that thump, it's gonna come and investigate. I may shake it a little bit, and then I'm gonna drag it out just a hair, see if you can get it biting. If I don't get it in the first six inches of a drag, that's when I start hopping that bait. I wanna thump it, make it drop, and hit the bottom, and hit the bottom. Same thing with the jig. The jig I'm gonna put rattles on, do the same thing, hop it. And those bass are gonna hit it on the fall. Um, a lot of times you're looking for that, re that reaction strike. So no matter what the soft plastic or the bottom bait is, you wanna really move it and keep it moving. Then there's the moving baits. The moving baits, the biggest thing is, is just bang it off of everything that you can. Keep it close to cover and structure. Keep it close to the bottom and, and, uh, and you'll get bit. All right, so let's talk about what happens when bass uh, are in dingy or, or even muddier water. The muddier the water, the less visibility it is, it pushes those fish, the bait fish and everything, shallower and shallower and shallower. So I'm not gonna be looking to fish deep in this color of water. I'm gonna be looking to fish shallow cover all the way out to about 10 feet, maybe 15 feet. I'm gonna let my fish finder, if I have one, dictate it. If not, I'm just gonna fish what I can see. These bass will get tied into cover. The muddier it is, the closer to that cover they get and the closer they are uh, and the more comfortable they feel. They have to be uh, close to something that they can see. They don't feel comfortable out there suspended and not be able to see the bottom or be positioned on uh, a piece of cover, or a piece of structure. So always keep that in mind. And it's actually, it's my favorite, uh, kind of my favorite watercolor or water clarity to, to fish because I can get by with moving a little faster, getting a little closer to the, uh, to the, to the fish without spooking them. Um, and I can, I can throw the baits that I enjoy throwing, pitching, flipping baits, uh, you know, lipless crankbaits, square bills. Um, I don't really like the one a spinner bait, but I do because that catches fish. But uh, it just is a lot more fun to fish uh, water that I, you know, when, the, the, when you get that clear water, you gotta make that mile long cast and, and you spook a lot of fish because they see the boat deep and all kinds of stuff. So I really enjoy fishing this color of water. Y'all look at this. My little lizard friend, hanging out. I love fishing in Florida. Hey, he just woke up, he says, uh-oh. Pretty dang cool for those of us who don't get to fish around them very much. Ooh, sorry about that. Squeaky camera mount. <laughs> Little guy. All right, well, I got to haul tail and get home. I got a five and a half hour drive and I got to try to get home before uh, my Boy Scout meeting tonight. So I'm gonna let you guys go. But I hope you learned something this, from this video. Um, you know, look in your tackle box. You don't necessarily have to go buy this stuff. Go look in your tackle box. See what you've got that's got rattles and that can vibrate and that can make, you know, can push a lot of water. Go out and try it. Uh, try it in this color of water. Don't be afraid to, uh, to try new things. So, but like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish. Um, also check out my, uh, my fishing shirt of the month club. Oh, I think that was a fishy. <laughs> anyway, check out my Fishing Shirt of the Month Club um, and, uh, and check out my, uh, my other channel, Fluke Master Reviews. We'll see ya.